So listen, I'm not really here to try and convince you that you need to switch to DaVinci Resolve. Yes, I love Resolve. I talk almost exclusively about DaVinci Resolve on this very channel, which if you're into that sort of thing, you wanna see some tutorials and stuff, maybe hit that little subscribe button for me. But the truth of the matter is, it's the end result that matters. If you can produce the content you want in the time frame you want, and you're not being bled dry every single month for the privilege to do so, you probably shouldn't switch. But if not, or you've been thinking about making the switch, or you're just a little bit curious, thanks to the recent release of DaVinci Resolve 19, here's why I don't think there's been a better time to make the switch to DaVinci Resolve. You can't really talk about DaVinci Resolve without talking about the fact that there is a free version, the free version has been pretty good for a long time, and that free version is now better than ever. As always, that free version gives you access to all of the pages within DaVinci Resolve, so that's editing on the cut or the edit pages, all of the color grading you could need on the color page, visual effects within Fusion, and audio within Fairlight. There's no time limitations, you can use it for as long as you like, and there's no surprise watermarks right at the end when you hit that export button either. And all of that's available with exports up to Ultra HD, 3840 by 2160, and up to 60 FPS. But all of that has been in the free version for a while. Thanks to DaVinci Resolve 19 though, there's now improved hardware acceleration. In pretty much all the versions of the free version, you get hardware accelerated encoding. That means it'll use your GPU when you're actually rendering out the videos to give you much faster exports. Plus, there's now H.264 and H.265 video decoding on all systems, including Windows. So now the timeline performance and the rendering performance is basically identical in the free version as it is in the studio version. Plus there's loads of titles, transitions, these stinger transitions, which are also a new addition and effects included. There's also a bunch of some really handy quality of life time saving features as well like stabilization, which has been there for a while. You can stabilize multiple clips in one big go directly from the timeline. There's auto audio sync features, so you can automatically sync up externally recorded audio in a jiffy just using the waveform. You can really quickly and easily create square and portrait timelines, so you can make videos for TikTok or Instagram. There's automatic audio ducking, which will bring your music down when someone starts talking. And there's automated dialogue leveling, which will just balance out your dialogue tracks in a jiffy. So that free version isn't just a tiny little sample taster of DaVinci Resolve. Instead, it gives you all of the tools that you would need to create your own social media channels or even build a highly successful YouTube channel or learn the ins and outs of video editing if you're trying to build a career in video editing all without spending a penny. It's genuinely quite impressive just how much they've packed into that free version. And yet somehow, there's also never been a better time to buy the studio version because the studio version of DaVinci Resolve has never offered so much. And it's still available for a one-off payment of just 300 bucks for a lifetime license which includes major updates. Or of course, you can get it for free if you buy one of their cameras or another piece of hardware like a color grading panel or the humble little speed editor. So what sets the studio version apart? Well, besides getting access to additional codecs and being able to export and edit in higher resolutions and higher frame rates, you get a bunch of pro level features as well. There's Magic Masks, which allows you to do kind of automatic rotoscoping in a jiffy. You just highlight the thing that you want, let it track, it will track it out. It generally does a pretty good job. And then you can do some isolated color grading on that subject, or you can disable the background, giving you a cutout rotoscope of your subject. And then you can do some nice compositing with it and all that sort of thing. It's pretty neat. There's the voice isolation, which is incredibly clever. It allows you to basically isolate the voices and get rid of any background noise. And it's really, really powerful. Whether it's just some ambient sounds or a power drill or someone's playing some music, whatever it is, simply tick a box and you can get rid of it. What up folks, it's Alex here. And today we're talking about the brand new voice isolation.
They took that one step further in DaVinci Resolve 19 by adding the Dialog Separator. This gives you individual granular controls for the voice, the background and the ambience. So you can either adjust the levels of the voices, the background and the ambience, or you can just tick some boxes to mute them completely. There's automatic subtitles available in 14 languages. You simply click a quick button, it blasts through your timeline, transcribes everything and creates the subtitles for you ready to go. You can then open them up, customize how they look as you need to. On a similar note, you can edit via text using transcriptions. So you can automatically transcribe all of the audio within a bunch of clips or even on your timeline and then edit by text. Highlight the bits that you want, drop them on the timeline and job done. You can even use this to automatically delete silent sections. There's depth maps, which will highlight objects within the foreground versus the background, which allows you to apply effects like fog or background blur much more realistically. But if glamour and beauty is more your thing, there's a facial refinement feature, which will pick out the faces within your footage, mark out and track their eyes, their nose, their lips, their cheeks, their jawline, all that sort of stuff. And then you can adjust the lighting, apply makeup, change the colors, the skin tones of all those different elements just from one simple control. There's the Music Remixer tool, which is another one that feels like magic. It gives you granular control over things like voice, drums, bass, guitar and other within your music tracks. So if you want to knock the volume down of the vocals while also boosting the drums, for example, you can and you can do it all in real time. Or you can mute each of the individual elements if you don't have access to the stems. Now, if you want a music service that does give you access to all of those individual elements, then you should check out this video's sponsor, Audio. Audio is a music subscription service that has a highly curated catalogue of music and sound effects which you can use for basically any project, as that license covers everything from YouTube, podcasts, video games, films, and even TV. Plus, there's a huge amount of music covering all genres, there's audio originals, which is music you won't find anywhere else, and you get access to all of the individual elements for every track that's available on audio. That Audio Pro license gives you unlimited downloads of all of their music and sound effects, and it's available for just 59 bucks for your first year. Or, if it's only music you need, you can get a lifetime license of all of their music for just a one-off payment of 199 bucks. To get started, simply head over to audio.com forward slash Alex. There's a link down in the description below. Right, let's get back to DaVinci Resolve. And then there's the sky replacement tool, which funnily enough, allows you to replace the skies within footage nice and easily. There's the relight tool, which allows you to put fake artificial lights basically into any scene. There's the smart reframe function, which allows you to basically track things and automatically make things work for portrait timelines without having to spend a bunch of time keyframing things. And then there's speed warp, which allows you to artificially slow down footage, which usually wouldn't have enough frames for silky smooth slow-mo. So you can take your footage, slow it down. It looks super janky. You enable the speed warps. Now it looks like super buttery smooth slow motion. And then there's things like noise reduction, some really smart AI based trackers, film grain and halation effects. There's actually a really cool tool they added in DaVinci Resolve 19 Studio called the Film Look Creator, which allows you to create really nice filmic looks just using one simple control. There's some Blackmagic style film stocks. You can control all of the different grading settings and then you can add grain, halation, gate weave and all those other things that you might want to add. Do it all from one control, job done. You can do it from the color page, but you can even do it directly from the edit page, saving you a little bit of time and more because I probably missed some. But a lot of those tools are actually using the AI engine within DaVinci Resolve called the Neural Engine. And the best thing about that is it's all local. So if you're trying to run your subtitles or you're trying to run your transcriptions, you can do so without being connected to the internet, which is perfect if you travel, if you're on a flight, for example, or you just have particularly ropey internet, you don't need to worry. You can still use all of those features because that's sat locally on your device. 
winner. It's reliable, mostly. Is it perfect? No, of course not. Like any software, there's going to be hiccups, there's going to be bugs, there's going to be quirks, there's going to be some oddities in there somewhere. Resolve is massive, so sometimes you may have some issues. But generally speaking, for 90% of the people, 90% of the time, it's pretty solid. That's actually one of the main reasons that a lot of people started to jump on board because other NLEs were getting a bit of a reputation for being somewhat unreliable. Plus, for those times when things do go a little bit sideways, when you have a bit of a crash in DaVinci Resolve, Blackmagic have put in a bunch of different features to try and ensure that you don't actually lose any of that work. There's database backups, which allows you to make a save, a backup of all of your projects within the current library in one go. There's even timeline backups. So within each individual project, you can do backups of those individual timelines. And there's a feature called live save, which basically makes a new save of your project every single time you make even the smallest adjustment. So if it does crash, you just open it back up and you should be pretty much exactly where you left off. Which means that hopefully you can just carry on with getting your work done, creating, having fun in DaVinci Resolve without worrying about it crashing on you all the time. I do, however, still smash Control and S an unhealthy amount of times, but you know, that's a habit I'm probably never gonna lose. It's system agnostic, which means you can use it on pretty much any device. I'm currently using Windows PC at the moment. I have a bunch of laptops. I've got this MacBook here. I've got this iPad Pro. I've also got a Windows ARM laptop over there as well. And I can just jump onto any of those devices and continue editing the same project in exactly the same way. It even works on Linux. If you're into that sort of thing, I'm not. So I haven't got anything to hold up for that section. Linux. If you're on Linux, you can do the same thing, which also means you can share projects with people that are on different systems as well. And you don't need to worry about who's on what and who's using this. If you're using DaVinci Resolve, you're pretty much good to go. And it gets even cooler when you combine it with the Blackmagic Cloud. So if you choose to, you can have all of your projects and the media synced up to the cloud. So then I can grab any of these devices, Windows, Mac, Linux, doesn't matter which one, run out the door without worrying about backups and SD cards, log in and just continue editing from where I left off. The Blackmagic Cloud is available as well, whether you're using the studio or the free version, and you can get it for just five bucks a month, $5 per month. That gives you the ability to store all of your projects up in the Blackmagic Cloud, so you can access them from any installation of DaVinci Resolve with an internet connection, and it also allows you to share projects with others as well, so you can all collaborate together. That five bucks a month also gives you two gigabytes of media storage in the cloud as well, which I know isn't a huge amount, but when you're generating proxies, which DaVinci Resolve will do automatically and only sync those proxies, two gig is actually more than you think. You can upgrade that two gig to 500 gig of media storage for just 15 bucks a month. And again, using proxies, that will actually take you further than you think. I've got terabytes of footage on my hard drives, but that's only taking up about 300 gig of media storage up in the cloud. Or if you've got 30 grand lying around, you can upgrade to one petabyte of storage instead. Because you know, you can never have too much cloud storage, I guess. Now, as mentioned, you can use that cloud to collaborate with others, which is awesome. You just upload your project, create the proxies, get the media uploaded. You, that's all done automatically. You don't really need to do anything at all. Someone else logs in, you can all edit and work on the same project, either individually, or you can even collaborate together. So one person's editing while someone else is doing the color grading. Personally, I use it as a solo creator an awful lot as well. So I can just start projects on my PC at home, grab one of the laptops, run out the door, and just carry on from where I left off. There's even a Blackmagic camera app available for Android and Apple devices. This allows you to record using the Blackmagic interface, but that will also create proxies and automatically sync those proxies to your Blackmagic Cloud account. So you can be out filming and someone else anywhere in the world can be receiving those files ready to start cutting everything together. It's pretty neat. And finally, the future and the community. DaVinci Resolve has gone from strength to strength over the past few years, and it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere anytime soon. The application has got better, it's had more updates, it runs faster than it ever has, and it probably is the best it's ever been. And the community keeps growing. There's more people out there creating YouTube tutorials, there's more forums out there, there's more people creating third-party plugins, 
and other cool stuff to try and help you work faster in DaVinci Resolve. And all of that combined is why I don't think there's ever been a better time to make the switch over to DaVinci Resolve. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.